So we're going to explain why or why not for these, right? The plane's tangent to the cylinder x squared plus y squared equals 1 all have the form ax plus bz plus c equals 0. Okay, well, what do you think? True or false? True. True. And you want me to explain why? Let's see. I'm picturing this. I'm picturing this is the x squared plus y squared uh, equals 1. Now the cylinder, right, it just does this, right? So, so this is, and it extends infinitely, right? But that, that's the picture. Question, Matthew? In and there it says x squared plus y squared, but in the book here it says x squared plus z squared equals 1. Oh, well, we better get this right then. Do you also have ax plus bz? Yeah. So we'll have to see which one. So there's a typo then, either in the book. Your, does everyone have ax? Does everyone have x squared plus z squared in their printed book? Uh -huh. Huh. So what do we trust more, the e-book or the printed book? You trust the printed book? Yeah, because in the answer, there's no y term. I mean, let's think about this, right? Suppose, suppose we say, here, we're at the point here, 0, 1, 0. Then we know the plane, right? The plane that's tangent to that one is this. Oh, sorry about that. Try that again. Right? Here's the point 0, 1, 0. The plane that's tangent to it would have to have the equation. What I mean, x could be anything it wants, and z can be anything as it wants. But the the plane is just y equals one. And you're telling me, yeah, that makes no sense because, right? If it's x squared plus y squared equals one, there's no y. I agree. Okay, so, so I have a typo. Typo in my book. Typo in the ebook. Sorry about that. Okay, we'll try again. So, what it should say is x squared plus z squared equals 1. Is that right, guys? Okay. And so, it's like this. Okay, so how do we get, in general, if we have some surface? Again, I, do you guys see why I drew it this way? Because the circle now would, would be x squared plus z squared equals 1 in, in the xz plane, and y could be anything it wants. Right? But in general, how do you get the equation of a tangent plane? Well, what I like to do is rewrite this as big F of x, y, z. Now, in order to do that, you want to set it equal to 0, right? So big F of x, y, z would be x squared plus z squared minus 1. Right? So you could set that equal to 0 if you want. But more importantly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the gradient of F, right? I will evaluate it at some point P and then I will dot that so let's say the point is actually a comma B comma C I will dot that with the vector X minus a Y minus B Z minus C set that equal to 0 and so this right here is maybe the easiest or most generic way to get the equation of a tangent plane. <laughs> so the gradient of the F is kind of the normal vector to the plane? Yes. It's, it's, it's interesting, I think. You guys, 
the problem I did earlier in the review today was all about grad little f. The reason we wrote little f is it was a function of what? It was a function of x and y. It was, and I remind you of the picture, it was the vector that gives me the steepest increase in z. That was the picture we had of grad f. Are you with me? Now, another thing about grad f is it's perpendicular to what we call the level what? Level curves. Okay, here's the deal about the gradient big F. We just upped it a dimension. We have a surface in R3 instead of a curve in R2. And so the reason that you get the tangent plane is because the vector comes out of the surface, right? And actually it's going across not level curves, but level surfaces of this huge four-dimensional function. So if you, if you understand that, that just like in this picture we move across level curves, here we move across level surfaces. And if you're moving across level surfaces, that's going to be orthogonal to the tangent plane, just like this is orthogonal to the, the tangent line. And orthogonal to the tangent plane gives you the normal vector. And the normal vector is what you want if you want a, uh, an equation to uh, a curve. I'm sorry, an equation to a plane. It's funny. The previous 30 seconds is not necessary for you to solve the problem. But I do think if you understood what I said, it, it, makes, uh, it makes this make a little more sense. I'll finish the problem, and then I guess I'll take questions. Uh, grad f, we get uh, well, 2x comma 0 comma 2z, but we want to evaluate that at, did they say, well, who knows, whatever a, b, c is, right? And then we want to dot it with x minus a, y minus b, and z minus c. So if you think about why the equation works out the way it does, you know, when I plug in my a, I get 2a dot this. So I have 2a times x minus a. But then when I do the next one, I have a 0. So I don't even need that. And then I have 2c times z minus c equals 0. And if you solve this, you're definitely going to get something with x's and z's. That, that's definitely in the form they mentioned. ax plus cz, or plus bz plus c is 0. Wow.